Welcome to another edition of the GNBS in 30. A lot has happened in the month of April. We are excited to tell you that the first company was certified to use the Made in Ghana certification mark. Also, as a safety conscious organization, the GNBS joined in the observance of Occupational Safety and Health Month. We also joined with our laboratory professionals in our certified laboratories to celebrate Medical Laboratory Professionals Week. In this program, you will also learn about our outreaches to the various regions by our, our business development team as well as our corporate communications team and so much more. Do stay tuned. I am Bibi Katoon, Corporate Communications Officer at the GNBS. Thank you for joining us. Let us once again update you on our standards in academia program. This is a program, a quiz competition actually, that is being rolled out by the GNBS in collaboration with the Ministry of Education at four primary schools in several regions, including regions 2, 3, 4, 5, and 10. These 20 schools will be participating in regional competitions as well as a final, which will be aired by the Guidal Learning Channel. In the month of April, we distributed our final booklets in Region 10 to have the students prepare for the competition, which will run in May and June. And of course, the winning schools will be given trophies and other prizes by the GNBS. In addition to that, as we continue our outreaches to the various regions, our business development team visited Regions 5 and 6 in collaboration with the Small Business Bureau, where a one-stop shop was held. At this one-stop shop, persons were learning about the opportunities offered by the GNBS. Our officers were able to educate them on standards and quality and how we can help them in training, technical assistance, our verification services, or even our calibration services to ensure their measuring instruments are accurate. Now on to the exciting news we promised. In October 2021, the GNBS launched its Made in Guyana Certification Mark program. That may sound like a lot of words, but it simply means that the GNBS now offers a certification program to manufacturers of various authentic Guyanese products. This means that as long as you use raw materials, authentic Guyanese raw materials, and you employ a large number of Guyanese staff, you can apply for this certification mark to be affixed to your product, and it will help you to increase competitiveness and market advantage, and your products can be more seen on the local and international market. The first company to be certified to use this mark was Fibertech Industrial Plastics, which is located at Agriculture Road Triumph East Coast Demerara. A short ceremony was hosted to celebrate this achievement. Let's take a look. I am delighted to be here as the GNBS certified the first company to use the Made in Guyana certification mark on its products. For years, businesses have been calling for the establishment of such a local program which provides a mark that differentiates their products based on key quality and other requirements. At a time when businesses are grappling to demonstrate quality and to remain competitive in expanding local economy, this program provides a framework for the development of quality system to enhance our local content. The GNBS aim is to help businesses to achieve a sense of pride and a higher level of competitiveness on the local, regional and international markets. Today, I want to congratulate Fibertech Industry Plastic on making this important step to promote brand recognition and to increase competitiveness for their products certified under the Made in Guyana mark. It's a good thing. It's a good thing because Guyana, we, people in the Caribbean and the rest of the world have to recognize that we can certify things in this country with a, with a quality seal that is made here and we must be proud of it. To Fibertech, Mr. Ali and his staff, great job, GNBS, good, good first step. And I'm telling you today that the, GNB, uh, the GMSA will support this process in terms of getting our membership to, to go behind this. Let me begin by first congratulating Fibertech Industrial Plastics for being the first company to obtain the right to carry this 
and I do say the right to carry this Made in Guyana mark. This certification program was launched in October 2021. Now just five months later, we are here to present this first certificate to Fibertech Industrial Plastics. It is my pleasure to recognize and commend you for your pioneering achievement. I think that by being the first to achieve this certification, you have a certain interest in ensuring the success of this Made in Guyana brand, for which our ambition is that it earns a national, regional, and global reputation for quality. The Made in Guyana mark will assure a purchaser that he or she is buying a product that has been produced substantively or exclusively in Guyana. The product will be guaranteed to have had at least 60% local material input and have been produced by a company that has at least 70% Guyanese in its workforce. By this mark, therefore, Guyanese consumers can be assured that when they buy Made in Guyana products, that they are supporting Guyanese industry and ultimately contributing to a tangible, in a tangible and significant manner to Guyanese development. This, therefore, in a nutshell, is our ambition for this initiative, to build a global brand, to build Brand Guyana in the positive sense, and we hope that others will follow with Fibertech leads in contribution to the efforts. This achievement means a great lot to us. It is what we all should do, adopt international standard. If you want to be take Guyana and become an international country and compete with what's there, it's where we need to go. But we'd like to thank the Bureau of Standards for the dedicated work they did over the past few years in helping us bring us a standard. We work together some of the time they come and work days here with us doing the testing, doing the certification, then they took it back to their lab there, do their certification there. It was a lot of work. I encourage other Guyanese companies to take the time we do some good work in Guyana here. Our doors, our windows, but we do good work here. All we need to do is get this certification. Congratulations to Fibertech Industrial Plastics. Let's take a short break and on the other side of the program, we will talk about safety in the workplace. Do you want to give your business or product much needed recognition while giving your customers and employees the best you have to offer? The GNBS Certification Services Department is here for you. We provide certification for PVC pipes, gold jewelry, and concrete hollow blocks, as well as medical and testing laboratories. Need to assess your operation systems? Our auditing services are just what you need. Our well-versed team is prompt and efficient, ensuring that no stone is left unturned, ensuring your success. Contact the Certification Services Department of the GNBS to find out how to get started. GNBS, creating a culture of quality through standards. Did you know April is Occupational Safety and Health Month? Yes, there's a famous quote I like to use in this instance that goes, safety doesn't happen by accident. It simply means that if you do not take precautions to ensure safety, then you might record an accident. The theme for this month's observances is act together to build a positive safety and health culture. To talk about this, I have with me our GNBS representative on NACOSH, Mr. Shalindra Rai. Mr. Rai, welcome. Thank you, baby. And can you start off by telling our viewers what is NACOSH and who are the other members on this committee? Uh, NACOSH is the National Advisory Council on Occupational Safety and Health. Apart from the Guyana National Bureau of Standards, we have representatives of three main groupings, and that is the government, the workers, and also the employers. 
Thank you, Mr. Rai. And that brings me to the other question. What is the function of this council? The main functions of the council are to advise the minister on matters relating to occupational safety and health, to make recommendations to the minister regarding OSH programs, for example, like enforcement activities and matters relating to the national policy on occupational safety and health, and also to promote awareness on occupational safety and health. And the GNBS is a very safety conscious organization. What is the GNBS's role on this committee? The main role of the GNBS on this committee is to advise on matters relating to standards development. For example, we have PPEs which are used to protect workers and the Bureau of Standard, we monitor the quality of these PPEs and we also have or develop standards for these PPE. So that's one example. But there are other examples where standard is required for occupational safety and health. In addition to that, we, as I mentioned just now, we also monitor the quality of PPE that are imported into Guyana to ensure that they are good quality so that they could provide adequate protection to workers. And the Bureau of Standard, we are also involved in the calibration of measuring instrument use in occupational safety and health monitoring. Okay. Yes, as you can see from the sign right behind us, the GNBS is very safety conscious. And on that note, we have our own safety committee in-house. Can you tell us about that committee where you also sit as a member? According to Section 23 of the Occupational Safety and Health Act, once you have an organization with 20 or more staff that are continuously employed, you're required to have a joint occupational safety and health committee. So the Bureau having a, a current staff of an, in excess of 130, we would have established a joint workplace committee. In addition to that, we would have established a, a policy on occupational safety and health, basically outline what we would like to have in the Bureau in terms of promoting occupational safety and health. Apart from that, the, we have monthly meetings of the Occupational Safety and Health internal committees where matters relating to occupational safety and health are discussed and addressed. We also conduct monthly inspections of the facility of the organization to ensure adherence to occupational safety health requirements and in situations where NCs are detected, we put systems in place to ensure those NCs are addressed. In addition to that, the Bureau also conducts safety assessment to ensure that matters relating or risks associated with the various activities of the um, Bureau are addressed and systems are put in place to mitigate those risks. Thank you, Mr. Rai. Actually, I remember when I first joined the GNBS and I heard that bell ringing for the fire drill and everybody had to rush to the front. It reminded me of primary school days where we would push each other to get to the front first. However, that I was told that that is not allowed in the workplace. Can you share your own experiences and some measures that you would like to share with employers and employees to ensure that their workplace is safe? Okay, the, the fire drill is, only, is one activity of the Occupational Safety and Health Committee where we practice so in the event of an emergency staff would know exactly what they're required to do in addition to that we could also account for staff in the event of an emergency but apart from that there are also i would also like to advise workers to ensure that they sensitize themselves on the requirements or guidelines relating to occupational safety and health in the workplace ensure that they use their ppes that are provided by the organization at all times in the execution of their duties. Also ensure that they follow the necessary guidelines in their respective work area because certain areas like in the laboratory and, and so forth require you to follow specific guidelines. So I would like to encourage that they adhere to those guidelines at all times in the execution of their duties. And finally, in the event of an emergency, I would encourage them to report it immediately and seek immediate medical attention. Thank you, Mr. Rai, for those insightful tips. And I hope our employees and employers are looking on and learning how they can implement these measures in their workplace to ensure they are safe. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome.
Speaking about safety, the GNBS also provides technical assistance on international safety standards, and that is the ISO 45001 2018, this international standard for occupational safety and health. I will take a break here and share with you our contact numbers, which are 219-0064-66 and WhatsApp 6924627, so you can contact us and learn more about that technical assistance program, where our officers are able to break down the requirements of the standard and help you to implement it in your organization. What if there were no standards in the health industry? How safe and effective would medical services be? When you are sick or injured, these are the last things you want to worry about. But without international standards, that could be a little tricky because standards provide internationally agreed guidelines and specifications to ensure things work. When disaster strikes, building standards make sure the hospital is still functional. Standards make sure you can rely on your prosthetic device and that your electronic health data is safe. Standards ensure that your surgeon's operating tools work when you need them most. Standards also help keep bugs at bay by making sure that everything is properly sterilized. Standards make sure medical devices and tools are effective, that medical labels are clear, and that your laboratory tests are done correctly. With more than 1,300 ISO international standards dedicated to health across a wide range of sectors, from dentistry to medical services to health information systems, you can rest assured that medical equipment will work as it's intended, that you're in safe hands, and that the whole community gets the level of quality care that they deserve. And they make a big contribution to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which is to ensure healthy lives and well-being for all. Thank you for staying tuned to this edition of the GNBS in 30. As we continue talking about safety, one of our local laboratories was recently certified to international standards, accredited that is. This Woodlands Pathology Laboratory also was certified to the GYS 170 national standard for the operations of a laboratory and now they have taken it one step further by getting accredited. The Woodlands Laboratory was accredited to the ISO 15189-2012 standard and the ISO 15190-2020 international standards. Of course, the GNBS was invited to participate in this event and let's take a look at a clip from our Executive Director Actin, Ms. Ramriti Karan. The Guyana National Bureau of Standards and is very particular and delighted to be here today to represent you know, the Woodlands Pathology Laboratory on, at this auspicious occasion. Allow me to first congratulate the Woodlands Limited Pathology Laboratory on achieving this international accreditation for both your quality and safety management system. Quality and safety, as we all know, are both hallmarks of responsible organizations. The GNBS is proud to have been a part of this journey towards accreditation. And for those who are aware, Woodlands Pathology Laboratory was first certified in the year 2013, in the year 2018 rather, and then it was recertified this year. The laboratory, even though the goal was, at, was to attain international accreditation, it continues to maintain the national certification. And this is something you know, that is really outstanding. As a, a Guyanese hospital, you are maintaining your national identity. And the Bureau will want to really congratulate you on, again on your recertification and accreditation and for maintaining the national identity. The event was also addressed by Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony and Dr. Neville Gobin of the Woodlands Hospital along with other management and staff. Again, congratulations to the Woodlands Pathology Laboratory on getting accredited. Now speaking about medical laboratories. These facilities are important to ensure that you're given the right diagnosis so that you can be cured of any illness that you may have. During the month of April, from April 24th to the 30th, Medical Laboratory Professionals Week was observed, 
celebrating these persons behind the scenes that make it all possible. The theme for this week was Back to the Lab, celebrating our past as we look into the future. The GNV has joined with many of the professionals at our certified laboratories to bring to you a little about why they are in the profession and why it's important. We also spoke to our certification team to tell you all about our laboratory certification program, which is important to again ensure accurate and reliable results. Let's take a look at what they have to say. For those of you out there who don't have any clue what a medical technologist is, we are the people behind the closed door. We test your blood sample, your urine, your stool, whatever sample comes off of you, we test it. Um, it helps your doctor to diagnose whatever you're suffering from. What I enjoyed about medical technology, every day is something new. Um, we test blood, we test urine, stool, um, in some cases, tissues, um, CSF, sputum. Our latest um, involvement was the nasopharyngeal swab where we tested for COVID. So every day is something new you find. And then we have also, um, I'm involved in quality, in quality management system. So every day you do something to improve your system. Medical laboratory professionals, and specifically, I would want to say something about being a medical technologist. It's a very important role. It can stretch so far and wide, but in a medical setting, it allows us to explore with nature what's happening, what's causing the disease, what's not causing the disease, because it's not everything that we find causes the disease. So it adds to the excitement of scientific discovery and I would want to say that it's a privilege to be working behind the scenes because we are not dealing with the patients directly, most of us, but it is good to know that little work that we are doing behind the scenes can go so far as it relates to patient care that the doctors can look at reports that we issue and can correctly and effectively, efficiently also diagnose a patient and that we can help each other to have healthier lives. So I would speak to my colleagues. I'm saying love what you do and dedicate your life to what you do. Because when you do that on a daily basis, even when I have meetings with staff on the inside, on a daily basis, you are exhibiting greatness because greatness is associated with helping people. The nurses, the doctors, those are persons that are seen. The, the, the medical professionals that like us, we're generally not seen. But on a daily basis, by helping people, we help the society positively because at the end of the day, we are, we are part of the healthcare business. A productive society is directly associated with how healthy uh, our population is. Diagnosis is a big deal, and professionals must understand that. I'd like to first say congratulations and I want to thank all the medical professionals in Guyana for the job they're doing and the Guyana National Bureau of Standard greatly recognize you guys and we just want to urge you guys to continue being the professionals that you are in the medical sector. Guyana National Bureau of Standard offers laboratory certification whereby we certify laboratory against the requirements of the GYS 170 standard which entails the general requirements for the operation of a laboratory. In order for a laboratory to become certified, there are several requirements that they must adhere to. Some of these are document control whereby there must be an established document system to ensure that the current version and the most updated version of a document is being in circulation. Also, these documents must be reviewed and approved by the relevant authority. Secondly, calibration. All equipment that are used to generate test results must be calibrated. In order for an equipment to issue accurate results, a calibration must be conducted on these equipment. And one of the most 
important requirement also is to conduct a management review of the laboratory quality management system to ensure that all requirements are being adhered to. Any strengths, any weaknesses or any issues must be addressed before a laboratory can become certified. Thank you to our competent laboratory professionals and our certification team and of course Mr. Keon Ranking who we spoke with. The GNBS in April also recertified the GPHC Medical Laboratory. The GPHC provides a wide range of services to Guyanese and of course being certified ensures that the services provided are accurate, the results are accurate and you are properly diagnosed if you visit the hospital. There was a short ceremony to celebrate this recertification. Let's take a look. Uh, let me say on behalf of the Guyana National Bureau of Standard, I would like to congratulate the management and staff of the GPHC Medical Laboratory for this achievement. Now, I know this is, this is not an easy road for, for you because I, I was one of the auditor and there was a lot of back and forth when it comes to record and so forth. But what I must commend is that Dr. Mohammed and her staff had the patients with us and were able to make this a successful one. The bottom line to all of this is that when our patient gets here, at the emergency room, the patient turn around, it's quite dependent on radiology and on lab. Most times, majority of the time, it's the lab. Also, inpatient for diagnostics and treatment of patient is very critical. So we, I will continue to ensure that we invest in the lab and give Dr. Mohammed and her staff all the necessary resources that they need to ensure that we all receive our accreditation. I know, for example, in our, 2020, in our strategic five-year strategic plan, ISO certification will be one of our, what we're hoping to achieve. Congratulations to the GPHC Laboratory for maintaining their certification. The GNBS looks forward to certifying more clinical and testing laboratories to ensure there is quality. Let me tell you, there are a host of services offered by the GNBS. For example, in addition to our laboratory certification program, we also certify products. One of those products happen to be gold jewelry. For example, if you're going to purchase a 12 carat piece of gold jewelry, it must be 12 carat. Or a 14 carat piece of gold jewelry, it must be 14 carat. In the first quarter of this year, the government met with several jewelry manufacturers to discuss hallmarking of this industry to ensure that these pieces of jewelry or gold articles, as you will say, meet the requirements of standard. During that event, our Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce presented brief remarks. Our government is particularly interested in, in our private sector and bringing all of us, um, all of the private sector partners along on the, this journey that we are on for um, immense opportunities. Uh, the development of the non-oil economy is, is priority um, in our, with, uh, our policy of our administration. That is part, it is um, crucial and fundamental to our economic policy. We have engaged on um, some, you see us in Dubai, you see us talking with Mia Motley and being at CARICOM, that's the president, um, being led by the president. And this is to open, the idea is to, we speak about open investment, the Guyana being open for business, Guyana being open for it, for investment opportunities, export opportunities, and, it, and it's not something to be taken lightly. And we are doing this, um, to give you, all of us, um, opportunities. And our engagements are with farmers, miners, um, craft makers, indigenous communities, and now the gold. Because Diana's gold, as you know, is, is premier.
Based on the National Standard GYS 50-2010 specification for gold articles, the GNBS provides testing for gold, and we are streamlining our processes to start monitoring gold jewelry offered for sale. As we end this edition of the GNBS in 30, let's take a look at our training programs we have to offer to you in the upcoming months. Thank you for joining this edition of the GNBS in 30. And of course, before we go, our contact numbers are 219-0064-66 and our WhatsApp number is 692-4627. Do have a good rest of the evening.